Hey, welcome back. So we're gonna look at a really nice useful rule of thumb that, that goes something like this, like dissolves like. And what it means is that if your solute is polar, then you will often dissolve very well in a solvent that is also polar. So for example, if you have something polar like sodium chloride, sodium chloride, uh, you can consider polar because it's made of ions with those positive and negative charges. And if you look at it in a solvent like water, and remember water, right, is a molecule with this bent geometry, and uh, it has that very large dipole moment that points towards the oxygen, then we can consider that the polar salt and the polar water will dissolve quite well in one another. If we replace it with a solute that is nonpolar, then we will tend to find that it does not dissolve in a polar solvent like water, but instead will dissolve very well in a nonpolar solvent like, say, hexane. So, for instance, uh, something that's nonpolar, oh uh, gosh, that would be something like, say, uh, C4. Um, H10, so that is butane, uh, would dissolve very well in a solvent like octane, so C8H18, let's say. So these molecules are both nonpolar. We know that carbon and hydrogen's electronegativities are almost on top of each other, so there's really no way to create a dipole moment in either of these molecules. Uh, we'll see this, you know, with oil and water don't mix. So if you try and make salad dressing and you mix oil and water, they don't mix. You get a suspension, you get little droplets in there, right? But uh, eventually they layer out and the oil floats on top and the water sinks to the bottom. So here's a really great application of this rule. So here's vitamin C, K3, A, and B5. And maybe you can pause the video and look at these structures. And the structures look kind of large and complicated, but uh, don't let that fool you. So uh, which one of these do you think would be soluble in water, which is a polar solvent, versus fat, which is a non-polar solvent? So pause the video and have a go, and then we'll meet back up here in a couple of seconds and go through it. All right, so if you had a go, uh, let's have a look at vitamin C. So vitamin C, if you're looking at this, you've got this carbon-oxygen bond here. You've got this OH bond here. So these are very polar groups. I'm going to circle these groups here that are exceptionally polar. We know the carbon-oxygen bond here is very polar. The carbon-oxygen bond, the OH bond here. So this is chock-a-block full of polar groups. And so it turns out that this makes it to be quite water-soluble. If we go to uh, maybe vitamin B5, again, we can see these polar groups, these OHs, these COs, these OHs. And again, in large molecules, just one of these groups is probably not enough. But in a molecule that has, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, however many, then uh, it's probably going to make it quite water-soluble. So we would expect this one um, to also be water-soluble. Now, if we look at vitamin A, we can see a polar OH group here. Uh, but quite frankly, the rest of the molecule is full of carbon and hydrogen bonds. So this is going to make it extremely nonpolar. And if it's extremely nonpolar, even though it's got a little itty bitty polar tail there, so much of it is nonpolar. We're going to say that as a whole, this molecule is probably going to dissolve better in fat than in water. And again, if we look at vitamin K3, we can look at this and we can say, well, you know, most of that molecule is pretty nonpolar. You got carbon and hydrogen bonds. And again, you got a couple of regions that are polar. But uh, I would say since most of that molecule is nonpolar, it's probably going to be a fat soluble vitamin. So uh, the top left and the bottom right are water soluble and the top right and the lower left are going to be fat soluble. And again, the rule isn't, you know, hard and fast. So it's not it only dissolves in water. Or it only dissolves in fat. But we can say that this one here is pretty darn fat soluble. This one is probably very fat soluble, maybe slightly water soluble. And this one here and this one here are exceptionally water-soluble.